Navidad. I'm Carl. I'm supposed to enter as a novice. We expected you sooner. Weren't you supposed to come here with your guardian? It's been so hectic lately, people will keep turning up out of the blue. He gave me the papers and left me at the gate. You must be used to that, though. I'm not the first novice here, am I? But that wasn't very considerate of him, was it? It's been so hectic here lately, novices arriving one after the other. The last one didn't even have a letter, and you'd think his backside was on fire. The way he kept looking over his shoulder. You took him without the letter? You didn't find that suspicious? My guess is he wanted to hide from someone. But he's a priest and knows how things work in the monastery. So there was nothing to prevent him from being accepted, at least temporarily. You're a different case though. Are you able to read? Naturally. I wouldn't be here otherwise. So then, are you ready to enter the Order of St. Benedict and renounce forever the temptations of this world? I am. Then you must rid yourself of all your worldly possessions. Sell them or give them to the poor and needy or donate them to the monastery. You may not enter this place burdened by worldly goods. Inside the gatehouse is a trunk in which you will find monks' robes. Put away all your possessions and dress yourself in the habit. Then you may rest a while, while I go and see the prior to arrange matters for your acceptance. Take care now. Strange feeling being without all of that. I didn't realise how much I'd grown used to it. Everything's prepared. It's time for you to take your vows. Do I really have to wear this? You'd better get used to it. You'll be wearing it for the rest of your life. We have gathered here today to welcome a new novice into our midst. Dear brother, forget your former life and embrace your new vocation in the community of the monks of St. Benedict. Opus Dei, Obedientia, Obprobria, the service of God, obedience and endurance of all discomfort. 
These are the cornerstones and succor of our order, which on this day shall become your own. Suscipe me, Domine, secundum eloquium tuum, et vivam. Et non confundas me, ab expectatione mea. Suski pe me domine secundum in loquium tuum et vivam in loquium tuum vivam et, et non confundas me ab expectatione me uh. accept your new name, Brother Gregor, and wear it with honor. Welcome, Brother. Welcome, brother. I am Antonius, a novice like you. I've been instructed to guide you around the monastery and tell you what you can expect and what your duties will be. Thanks for helping me out during the ceremony. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. You don't know Latin, do you? Don't worry. Work in the scriptorium will teach you fast enough. Why exactly are you here? Was it your choice? Or did someone force you to come? It was my choice. For a common lad like me, it's the easiest way to get an education and do something worthwhile with my life. It looks like we're both here for the same reason. I think we'll get along. Would you tell me something about yourself? I'm a novice and I'm here because I'd make a poor merchant. I like books and I want an education. Although I must say, so far the monastic life's been quite... unexpected. Let's go then. Good. But before we do, here's a letter directly from the prior telling you all your regular duties from tomorrow onwards. Make sure to read it this evening, so you know how things work. Right, we can go now. Follow me closely. I'll explain everything as we go. Remember one word, discipline. It's your job to work and pray. You serve the Lord now, not your own bodily needs. Salve, be well. This is the way to the dormitory where we all sleep. You'll find a free bed there, which is now yours. Do you know the first thing the monastery taught me? To appreciate sleep. We rise before dawn every day. It takes a bit of getting used to. This is the garden, a place for silent contemplation and meditation. Centuries ago, this monastery was founded by the most esteemed of brothers, St. Procopius. His earthly remains can be found in a cave under the monastery, and his spirit wanders the corridors at night, punishing any misbehaving novices. <laughs> so beware. Here are the fratery and scriptorium, together with the library. These are the places where we work. Ora et labora. Pray and work. As a novice, you must always listen to your superior brethren. And above us monks are the prior and the circators, who punish every infraction. You'll know them by the canes they carry. Do what they say. 
This is the refectory where we come together to eat. During meals, you must be silent. Only one brother reads aloud from the rule of Saint Benedict. The rule is the only law we recognize, with the exception of those from God himself. If you break any of its precepts, library, the pride of our monastery, a trove of learning. We don't just read books here, we also copy them. You too will learn how. And that's all. Today you are still free from duty, but tomorrow you begin work like the others. If you need anything, ask any of the brothers. We will be glad to help you. And I recommend you get to know the other novices. You already know me. Then there is Siskin, Yodok and Lucas. Thanks for showing me around. There's a lot to learn here. Will you tell me something about yourself? There's not much to tell. I lived in Vlashim and after my father died, I found out I wasn't much of a merchant. So I left the shop to my brother and decided to become a monk. It's peaceful here. There's food and lots of time to read. So you chose to come here? It may seem strange, but I'm one of the few novices that did. I might be the only one. The truth is, the idea of spending my life in a monastery was more appealing than being cooped up in a greasy old shop. I need to make a confession. I'm no priest, but tell me what you've done. It's probably nothing to worry about. I'm here in the monastery looking for a thief. He had a hand in burning down the Neuhof stud. You don't say. And who are you to take such an interest? That's not important. Why are you telling me this anyway? What do you want from me? Perhaps you could help me find him? The missing thief? If I knew anything, I'd tell you. But I suppose it must be one of the novices. I've only recently heard about the Neuhof incident. And all the other brethren have been here much longer than that. I know. Aside from me, there are only four novices, but still I don't know which one he could be. Three? Please, leave me out of it. And you're right that it could be any one of them. No one knows anything about Lucas. Siskin might be a lot of things, but a monk isn't one of them. And Yodok is a slimy worm. It wouldn't surprise me if he was behind that massacre. Actually, the more I think about it, the less I like that Yodok. He's a treacherous rat who'd do anything to get in someone's good books. The thought of Yodok at Neuhof since chills up my spine. <sighs> Maybe you're right. It's not a pretty thought. Thanks for your help, and please don't say a word to anyone. Don't fret, my friend. Your secrets are locked inside my lips. It occurs to me you might be the man to ask. I'm looking for some lockpicks. Do you know anyone in the monastery who could help me? Lockpicks? You surprise me, brother. And you, a nobleman's son. But you could ask Brother Solarius. They say he used to be a thief. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. Well, that's all. Thank you for your time, brother. I'm Gregor, a novice. I saw you at the ceremony. I know. It was hard not to notice you. And you are? Lucas, also a novice. Don't get upset, but I don't want to talk to you. I'm happiest alone. I'd like to know something about the other novices. I don't know much, but ask away. Tell me about Antonius. I'd like to, but there's nothing to tell. I've never spoken to him. I've never asked about him. You really don't know anything about anyone? 
Well, thanks anyway. Don't get upset. I'm sorry I can't tell you more. I just haven't felt like getting to know anyone yet. Will you tell me something about yourself? I... there's nothing I can tell you. I mean, where you're from, what sort of life you had before, that sort of thing. I'm a novice, and my monastic name is Lucas. Nothing else matters. Come on. Is there really nothing at all you can tell me? I could, but I don't want to. I'm Today's sorry. Food. I want to stay focused on work and prayer, not on who I once was. I never will be again. What has been isn't important for us. We cast the past aside when we walked through the monastery gates and took our oath. Never forget that. Those were the days. You'll see. There's something I should tell you. Something secret. I'm looking for someone here in the monastery. You're looking for someone? But you're a novice, aren't you? I am a novice. At least until I find the man I'm looking for. Why would you be looking amongst monks? You know, the laws of man aren't valid here. In the cloister, we're subject to divine law, the law of the church. I'm looking for a footpad who's hiding out here in the monastery. He had a hand in raising the Neuhof farm. He's taken many lives. I, I heard something about that. But why are you telling me all this? Because you could help me. It has to be one of the other novices. That can't be. Have you told the prior? What are you going to do to this man once you find him? Talk to him. Then I'll see. Do you have any idea which of the novices could be the imposter I'm looking for? I don't know, and I don't care to know. I wish you'd never told me. Now I won't be able to sleep at night. Greetings, brother. I'm Gregor, and I'm new here. Greetings to you, brother. I'm Yodok, the oldest of the novices. I hope you'll like it here in the monastery and that you won't get into trouble. Trouble? You're young, perhaps intemperate. You might easily stray from the rules of the order. I suggest you get to know the older monks. You never know when it might come in handy. I'm interested in the other novices. Do you know anything about Antonius? Only that he came to the monastery voluntarily, because he didn't want to work in his father's shop. Antonius is all right. You can rely on him. He won't betray your confidence. He's always happy to help, which is more than can be said for the other brothers. I'm interested in Lucas. Nobody knows much about Lucas. He keeps himself to himself. If you ask me, he's got something to hide. I'd keep well clear of him if I was you. Do you have any grounds for suspecting him of something? Quite a lot. And also none at all. The circators who make the rounds despise him, and they'd never punish anyone without cause. Listen, there's something I ought to tell you. There's a dangerous criminal hiding in the monastery, and I came here to look for him. Ha! I knew it! He's a villain. Uh, who are you, though? Oh, it's better not to ask, isn't it? It's always safer not to ask. Never mind that. Who's a villain? That's Siskin. I always thought he was an odd one, the way he carries on. But now it makes perfect sense. He's a criminal fleeing justice. What are you talking about? You clearly know something I don't. I'm telling you, keep your eye on him. He's no monk. That's what my gut tells me. And my gut's never wrong. What are you going to do to that fellow once you find him? I don't know yet. You should talk to the circators or the prior about it. Not act on your own. Can you tell me something about yourself? I would if there was anything noteworthy to say. But I'm just the ordinary son of a landowner, now a monk. There's nothing in my past, present, or future that anyone could find interesting. Why did you join the monastery? Because it was better than living in poverty. 
As the youngest son, I'm not entitled to inherit my father's estate, but he was kind enough to sell off some cattle and send me here. And you know what? I'm glad to be here. Servus. It's better than mucking out manure. My name's Gregor, a novice. You can call me Siskin. Now, are you here of your own free will, or is this a punishment? Although, it's not important. Welcome to purgatory. Did you say purgatory? You'll see soon enough. Soon enough. Will you tell me something about yourself? Look, nothing against you, but I prefer not to talk about my past. Are you hiding something? Why are you so reluctant to tell me anything about yourself? I'm hiding a lousy past that I'd rather forget. I hate to think of all I lost when they stuck me in here. And also, because I really hate the question, Aren't you the son of the famed Sir Smil Flashka of Pardubitz? I was rich and I had everything. But then my father began to feel his time approaching, so he decided to send a son to the monastery. And, being the youngest, a lot fell on me. I've no head for managing the estate, and they said I'd squander it. Can you imagine? Me, in a monastery. So I took what coin I could from home with me, so I didn't lose out completely. But you didn't have to come here if you didn't want to. No, not if I didn't mind being left to beg alms by the city gate. I had one choice, the monastery or nothing. If it had come to that after my father's death, so be it. But to get rid of me while he's still alive? They must have realized you robbed them. I donated some of the silver to the monastery when I came in, just to piss them off. I can just see my brothers, I mean my siblings, arguing with the abbot to give it back. And you stashed away the remainder? Indeed so. What's your plan with this treasure? To get out of here as soon as I can. I'll wait another year or two until my hot-headed brothers cool off a bit, and then I'll take the silver and run off somewhere, far, far away from here. That's all I wanted to know. Please, keep it to yourself. Especially the part about the coin. There's something I should tell you. Something you won't be happy to hear. I'm here to find someone and, um, well, to do away with him. But listen, it's not murder. Not when it's a man like him. He's one of the brigands who burned down Neuhoff. He doesn't deserve to live. What's he doing here? And who are you? They call him Pius because he used to be a priest. When he found out a lot of people were after him, he hid away here. And as you can see, escaped suspicion. They sent me here to find him and bring him to justice. He's one of the novices. So we have one outlaw and one assassin in our midst. This place is a lot more exciting than I expected. Do you know who it is? Well, that's just it. I suspect it could be Yodok. Do you know that occurred to me too? Yodok's a scoundrel and a cheat. I believe he'd be capable of anything. I suspect Lucas. He certainly says little enough, and he keeps himself to himself. I could well believe he's hiding something, but not that he's a killer. It could be Antonius? Antonius? He's a fine fellow. No, no, it can't be him. Although... You never know what's hiding beneath a man's skin.
See how hard it is. It could be anyone, and at the same time, nobody in particular. I won't tell you more, and I'd like you to keep silent about this too. You're talking about killing in the monastery. I really should report it. Would you do that? I have a feeling you wouldn't. You're right. I'll keep it to myself. I've got problems enough of my own without involving myself in yours. And besides, I mean to be gone from here within a year, so why should I care what happens with the monastery? Thank you, Siskin. I appreciate it. How is it that you don't get any penance for missing morning prayers? I've paid off the circators to turn a blind eye. And the other monks don't notice as long as you show your face there from time to time. No one's too awake at that time of the morning. What troubles you? Or maybe you're the one I'm looking for. Me? A criminal? Look at me. How could I be? No, my friend, you're accusing the wrong man. If you want my advice, the oddest one around is Siskin. That fellow is never meant to be a monk. He's hiding something from us. No. I'm sure of it. It's you. A cowardly, filthy rat. A nasty, spineless piece of shit. No, I, I never. It was Siskin. It, it's him you want, not me. Leave me alone. I never done you any harm. See you this time, brother. Salve, Domini. I think that you're the man I'm looking for. What are you on about? You can't be serious. I am. Your secretiveness, the fact that you don't want to speak with anyone, that you keep to yourself, you're obviously hiding something. But I... I... You're wrong. You've made a terrible mistake. I'm not the man you're looking for. I'm not! Please, don't hurt me. I'll leave you in peace for the time being. You're a madman. A dangerous madman. I never want to speak to you again. Will you tell me something about yourself? I... There's nothing I can tell you. I mean, where you're from, what sort of life you had before, that sort of thing. I'm a novice, and my money... You see, I'm looking for someone here. You're looking for someone? But you're a novice, aren't you? I am a novice. At least until I find the man I'm looking for. Why would you be looking amongst monks? You know, the laws of man... I'm looking for a foot... I... Because you could help me. That can't be. Have you told the prior? What are you going to do to this? I don't know yet. It won't be easy to drag this criminal away from the protection of the cloister. Unless the abbot gives his blessing. But I still can't believe it. Do you have any idea which of the novices could be the imposter I'm looking for? I don't know, and I don't care to know. I wish you'd never... I've heard some unsettling news. I've been told you've lied about who you are the entire time you've been here. What do you have to say about it? Who are you really? It's true that I'm not who I say I am. I'm not the young Lord Carl. He ran away and sent me in his place. Why would you agree to that? Money. I was drowning in debt, and the money from Sir Carl helped my family stay afloat. Carl never wanted to become a monk, but Father, I found peace here in the monastery. 
It's better for me to serve God here than continue my life of sin in the world outside. Thank you for your honesty. Because you've told the truth, I'll forgive you for deceiving us. Continue to be an exemplary monk and I promise I'll forget about what's happened. Well, unless someone from Sakal's family intervenes, then I'll have no choice. I'll have to deal with the situation. Thank you for your kindness, brother. I'm Gregor, a novice. I know. I saw you at the ceremony. My name is Neblis, and I'm the provost here. I'm in charge of the monastery's property, as well as handling trade with the outside world. That means you get to leave the monastery? No, not at all. I just write lists and send them out. Tell me about yourself. I'm the provost of this monastery. It's my job to ensure the monks live a humble life and that any surpluses go to the poor. But in reality, I spend all my time making sure my brother's gluttony and the construction of a new church don't swallow up the few resources we have left. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. What can you tell me about the novices here? What can I say? You're here to demonstrate your devotion to God and to live a monastic life. 
After a year, you can make your vows and become a fully-fledged brother. I meant something specific about the brothers that are here. But you know them yourself. Yodok is an odd one, but he's diligent and eager, perhaps too eager. Siskin is good company, but a bit too worldly for a monk. Antonius is hard-working and will help with anything, but prays less than he ought. Lucas is as quiet as a mouse, and no one knows much about him. And then we have you, about who I know nothing. with all the humility and submission inspired by reverence. But as for coarse jests and idle words or words that put into laughter, these we condemn everywhere. Aha, uh -huh, Gregor, talk to me. And for such conversation, we do not permit a disciple. I'm looking for something a little, um, the rule of unorthodox. And what would Reading that be the exactly? Therefore, when anyone receives the name of abbot, I'm looking for lock picks. Lock picks? And what would you like those for? I'd like to practice opening locks, just for the fun of it. Well, why not? So you heard I used to be a burglar, did you? I put it all behind me as soon as I took the vows. But I do have a few lock picks left. I'll trade them for food. Get me a bite to eat. And you can have your lockpicks. Can't say fairer than that, can I? Brother, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be working somewhere? Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Yeah, I was feeling a bit queasy. Really? I'll pretend nothing happened, but this is the last time, brother. Ah. Gregor, talk to me. I'm here to work. Excellent. I've been waiting for you. There's the alchemist's laboratory. You'll find ingredients in the chests next to it. Concoct two bucks blood potions. Once you finish them, you'll find me somewhere nearby. Don't forget to let me know when you're done so I can check them.
talk to me, brother? I've finished my work. Show me what you've made. Brother, brother, what will become of you? Oh, well, perhaps tomorrow you'll do better. <sighs> I'll have to get something to eat. I'm starting to get hungry. What do we have here? A nice sharp dagger. Now what would a monk need that for? What would you like? I found this piece of parchment. It looks like it's been ripped out of a book. Do you know what it is? Hmm. It appears to be a page torn out of Ovid. Ovid? What is that? Is it the name of a book? Not what, but who? Ovid was a great Roman poet. We have a few volumes by him in the library, but one of them vanished one day. Now I believe I can guess what happened. Brother Eustace, may the earth rest lightly on him, was quite narrow-minded when it came to classical literature. If a book had any mention of woman at all, he condemned it as a heretical work. If he'd had his way, all such books would have been burned. Ovid's The Art of Love must have been such a thorn in his side that he stole it from the library, tore it up, and hid the pages wherever he could. Oh, would you like me to put the book back together again? Absolutely! Eustace's wits weren't the sharpest, so I'm sure he didn't destroy any of the pages. I imagine he hid them throughout the monastery. It might take you a while to find them all, but when you do, you can rest assured Ovid will return to his rightful place in the library. Good. I'll look around for it. Thank you, brother. It's of no great importance, but if you can find all ten pages, I'll be most grateful. Can you tell me something about the book? The Art of Love is a sort of manual instructing young people how to find and maintain love. It's a lovely work. 
I don't understand what bothered Eustace so much about it, but as I was saying, he considered the book to be immoral and tore it up to stop it corrupting any of his brothers. Where should I look? If I knew, I wouldn't have asked you to do it. The pages of the book could be hidden anywhere, from the garden to the refectory. I found a few pages of the torn up book, but I still don't have them all. Wonderful. Keep looking then. I'm sure you can find the rest. Is it possible to learn something about the other novices in the library? Only the abbot and the prior keep such records. And can I see them? No. The abbot writes and keeps his records in his chambers, and only he and the prior are permitted to read them. I'm here to work. Good. This is most likely the first time you've ever done this in your life. But it's easier than you think. Just a bit of practice and learning Latin. Here's the original, and here are the blank parchments on which you'll copy what you read in the original. Is that clear? Then you may begin, and try not to make a mess of it. My boy, my boy, what have you done? This is a disaster. The forbidden books must be in that cabinet. What do you desire, Brother Gregor? I found a dagger in your stash. And why shouldn't you have? I did hide it there, after all. Do you often go through other people's belongings? Only when necessary. And was it necessary? Are you looking for someone or something? Maybe if you tried just asking, you'd have better luck. That dagger's the only thing I have left of my father. It was in our old shop, under the counter. Father kept it there to protect himself from thieves. <laughs> when I was little, I admired that dagger so much. I asked father if he'd give it to me when I was older. He always said yes, but only after he was dead. Go on, please. Now father's dead and I'm here. That piece of steel is the only thing I have left from the outside world. 
I know it's not suitable for a monk, but I can't part with it. Now you can give it back to me. Thou shalt not steal. I'd rather keep it. It might come in handy. But you can't. It's not yours. So you're nothing but a common thief. I hope your conscience will get the better of you one day and you'll return it. I know you're pious. The man I've been looking for. So you're finally sure? Tell me, Gregor, or Carl, or whatever your true name is. What do you want to do now? I should kill you. And why would you want to do that? Because that's what they told you to do. I, I was a bandit, and I was at Nyhoff. I've robbed and stolen, but I swear to God I've never in my life slain innocent people. What I saw at Nyhoff made me realize my life was worth shit, but I still had a chance to change for the better. Here in the monastery I've had plenty of time to think things over, but then you showed up and fucked it all up. So the evildoer changes his ways and finds God. What exactly are you proposing? Both of us can leave this place. You can go back to your people, and I can go somewhere where I can live out my life in peace, and no one will try to kill me. If we work together, we can both get what we want. You deserve to die, and I'm happy to be the one to kill you. I'm sorry to hear that. I thought we could come to an agreement that left both of us alive. But since there's no convincing you, I'll settle for just me. Kurva fix. Fucking hell! Yeah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>